everyone. So I can't talk for too long, although I always say that, and this is definitely going to be half an hour or more, but the um, uh, reason I can't talk is because I had a little bit of a long day. Definitely not as long as my first couple days in Tokyo. Um, I think because I had so much to do, they packed a whole lot in the first couple days, um, just because most of it was in Tokyo. Kyoto has been a little bit lighter, which is really lovely. I also think they did that on purpose so that I can explore Kyoto, because Kyoto is a lot more explorable than Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo has better, not better, it has more subway lines that intersect and connect. But um, Kyoto is a little bit smaller and less crowded. So, just a little bit about my day. Today was a great day. I was not most excited. I was really excited to go to Tokyo University uh, for reasons having to do with my project, but I was really, really excited to come to Kyoto University because there are active student groups at Kyoto right now. I didn't think I would get to meet them um, because my uh, research is being framed in terms of how libraries support social justice and activism in our work, either through our collections or through information literacy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but because of the way libraries work here, things tend to be a little bit different, understandably. So the meeting went really well. Uh, I think Kyoto by far has probably um, the best and most comprehensive general collection on human rights. They have a whole section just dedicated to human rights research, uh, which is a little bit surprising given the other universities I visited and what I found and just how um, libraries are set up here and that the ones I'm visiting are the, the general collection libraries when in reality libraries at universities aren't just one centralized system. In fact, they're um, separate systems. So every department, uh, like I was talking about before, has a tiny library in it um, that isn't necessarily run by librarians and that has very specific material to them. So, and other smaller libraries at universities, uh, there have been specifically social justice collections or collections about um, topics related to that. But Kyoto was the first one that actually had, like, it in the general collection, and it was really, like, um, blatantly marked, and yeah, it was super cool. The librarians were really cool. My interpreter today was so awesome. I had so much fun with him. We went around exploring, and, 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 oh my gosh, he's so great. So... My woes about yesterday when I was walking so much, my legs were hurting and I got stuck and oh, oh, um, uh, were assuaged a little bit today because I told him I love riding a bike and he got really excited. He's like, you like riding bikes? And he says, let's go get a bike. And I was like, what? <sighs> so again, I could have Googled this. I could have figured it out, but I didn't because I get way too nervous and then it's hard for me to function. Anxiety is so difficult to deal with even though, and this is me having it under control, so just imagine it not under control. Oh, um, so he was like, let's go get a bike, and we did. He even paid for my bike, which is so sweet. It was $10 and you get it for the whole day. It's this sweet, like one speed bike and you get a little basket so you can put all the stuff you buy. And he says, yeah, it's so easy. You can ride all the way around Kyoto in like an hour or two. Um, and so it was so nice. So I didn't have to worry about the subway or buses. Oh, buses here. Buses anywhere. I'm just, uh, for some reason, subways I can understand. I think it's because they're on a track. And so I know that they'll never go off that track, or at least they aren't supposed to. Uh, but buses just, they scare me. I, I don't know. I'm just always worried that they're going to be like, we're going this way instead or something. Anyway, again, all, all my stuff. Buses, scary. So we just rode our bikes to Kyoto University and he took me along the Kanagawa River, which is what I tried to walk along last night when it was dark, but the walk was long and I was lonely. Oh my gosh, the the bike path along Kanagawa is so, so beautiful. He was like 
basically giving me a tour. He was like telling me about all the birds and we stopped and look at the fish and he told me about the giant salamander that are in the Kanagawa. They're like big. They're like feet, like feet big, multiple feet. The salamanders are so big here when I was like, oh cute salamander, like a little salamander. No, no, they are like salamander, like the Godzillas of salamanders. They're so big. Anyway, so we got to see the fish and all the wildlife. And then like, there's a, like a shrine and a temple on every corner here. And you'll just be like riding, riding along in like a, a city area and then all of a sudden a temple and then another temple and another temple. And there were so many. And he took me to some of his favorite ones. He showed me his university which is right next to a giant Buddhist temple that he just gets to see every day, just on his ride by, and he loves it. It was beautiful. I took a picture of a bunch of them. I was able to ride to some of the bigger temples. I still haven't gone to... totally just based on the name. The really famous one with like the Jillian uh, Orange Tory Gates. It's really famous. Um, I'm gonna try to go to it tomorrow. There's no way I can walk up all those stairs. It does take about an hour or two to get all the way up top through all the Tory gates. Um, no, I'll maybe do 10 stairs max. My legs are, yeah, not, not cut out for that. Um, so I'm just gonna rent another bike tomorrow. Oh, it was so, it was so easy to do. Um, they spoke fairly good English because of course people are gonna be renting bikes. I tried to go to Gion, the Geisha district today, and I went a little bit, but it was so crowded. Um, and there, there are really strong restrictions on bikes there, so you can't ride them or park them in certain areas. Ugh. So I was like pedaling along, um, and then I, I just got really anxious. There were just so many people. I didn't understand the map and where to park the bike. The maps are, they're pretty, they're pretty confusing. Uh, here. Yeah. So, so I rode by it and I was like, there's, there's that. There's Nishiki Market and the Gion District. I might go tomorrow, maybe. Um, I'll just take a subway and walk so I don't have to deal with parking the bike. Um, or I won't. I, you know, that just depends. I'll either rent a bike or I'll take the subway, but... Man, I love biking around Kyoto. It was so nice to like have the nice breeze and along the river and on those like beautiful, beautiful streets. Man, it was so great. So great. Even when I was stressed out near Gion and I didn't know where to go, I was on a bike, so there were no problems at all. And then when I was done, when I got too anxious, I was like, I'm just gonna ride my bike back. I don't have to worry about walking. I don't have to worry about getting on the correct platform. I don't have to worry about anything. Just ride, ride home. And I did. And it was lovely. So lovely. Mm. So, that was like generally my day. But my interpreter, who is amazing, he did not have to do this. He spent so much extra time with me today. And ro we rode bikes around together. How? How precious and pure is that? We rode bikes together in Kyoto. I'm so happy. Um, so he took me to Yoshida Dormitory, which is really, really famous at Kyoto University. It is a very old house, extremely old. Um, and it is not common in Japan for students to live in dormitories on campuses. It's extremely rare. Uh, one, because space issues. Two, there's uh, a lot of students and Three, it's just so much easier to live at home, like, uh, costs and everything. Um, yeah, so Yoshida is a very rare case of students actually living on campus, but it is a very, very old building. Um, it's, it's not like it is in the movies, but I suppose that might be, like, a common reference we can start from. So it has, like, the sliding doors and, um... The, the doors don't have the, the paper on it, there's glass and everything, but they're like the really long houses, long hallways, multiple rooms, multiple floors. Oh, so beautiful. 
Uh, but for years, the university's been trying to shut it down, to close it and build a brand new building. Mm, because if you can imagine, uh, there isn't a whole lot of space to build and expand here, so new buildings are kind of um, sought after in some instances. Not all, there's a lot of protected buildings, but uh, so they've been trying to kick the students out of Yoshida dorm. But the students have, for quite a while, been like very, very active and actively protesting the closing of the dorm in some, mm, I think what Japanese society might consider like unsavory ways. So uh, what they've been doing on a lot of Japanese campuses, uh, it's not really allowed. It's kind of prohibited for you to hand out flyers and uh, certain materials on certain topics. Um, and this is one of those topics, another kind of politically charged topics like, uh, like anti-war and, um, other social justice things. So, um, let me see if I can get, like, a picture or my notes or something really quick. Nope, not that. Um, so basically, students aren't really allowed to or... Oh, it, my pictures are buried too far in there. Um, allowed to do that type of stuff, so protecting Yoshida dorm has been very difficult for the students and they are very well known for their specific type of activism. I just like slipped off this table, um, which is very specific to Japan. So, um, uh, student clubs, but also groups that have something to say, create these really large signboards on wood. They're like big. They aren't like our flyers that we post. It's like an eight and a half by 11. They are big, like two of me tall and then like many of me wide. It's, they're huge, huge signboards. Um, they're usually very artistic. So again, like art coming back into the importance of activism and uh, protest. Uh, so, and these are called tatekan. So the students create these tatekan, which Kyoto University is very famous for. Very famous. I was able to see a couple and I took some pictures. Oh my gosh, it was like a dream come true. Oh, it was so cool. And um, the students of Yoshida are, they just had, I think it was like yesterday or the day before, they just went through their first uh, trial on the hearing as to whether or not to keep the dorm open. So there are so many awesome things happening right now while I'm here. Oh, I wish I could have gone. It's so cool. But um, so they have these giant tatekan, but even the tatekan are becoming super political because uh, Kyoto, I think it was just last year or the year before, very recently banned uh, or prohibited tatekan being shown on the streets. Like students can get in a lot of trouble or find something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is if these are publicly visible because and this is the city of Kyoto, not the university that did it. The university doesn't allow political messaging on them, um, but the city doesn't allow them to be able to be seen um, from outside of the university because if you think about it, it's one of those things that's like, it's considered to be an eyesore or bad for tourism or that that kind of argument thing. So I saw some Tatekan and I saw some old ones that they had in the back because going all the way back to the beginning of this diatribe, my interpreter, I was like, can we go see it? And he was like, yes, it's just right over there. Let's ride our bikes over to Yoshida dorm. And we did. And I got to go inside. Um, I was not allowed to take pictures uh, for, for reasons, but the pictures are in my mind. Um, I did get a lot of really cool flyers, was able to talk to a couple people, um, got some email addresses, so I'm really excited. I'm super excited because uh, depending on how um, the hearing goes, the dorm might never exist again. This might have been the only time 
ever, 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 even if I come back within a year, that I will ever be able to see Yoshida Dorm, which is so sad. So, so sad. I'm really bummed I couldn't take pictures. I'm, yeah, I'm just like so bummed out for so many reasons. I really hope that they have a way where they're coming up with a way to preserve some of the things they've been working on there, just like the great things like Patatikan and their, yeah, a lot of their like event players and stuff. Anyway, I'm really sad about that. Hopefully I can get in contact with some of them um, and collect some of their materials, but yeah, so I was able to go to their dorm. So cool. So, such a mind-blowing experience. It was amazing. I got to tour through the whole dorm, and I thought that was going to be the end of my day. Um, I didn't get a, a guided tour. We were just allowed to walk through, and I was able to read a lot of the flyers and see um, the artwork on the walls. It's very hard to explain. These are not like dorms that we have in the U.S. Um, the students are required to live in dorms. Dorms are very specific, like very sanitized, very the same. Here, it's almost like a, like a collective, um, kind of like a co-op collective, just like a whole lot of things. There's tons of art, so much creativity. Like, they, um, I don't want to call it graffiti, but they make art uh, on like their walls, the walls of buildings just everywhere. It's, there's like lounge areas for groups of people everywhere to get together, and there's like guitars sitting out and like shared common spaces with their own libraries of like manga and books and DVDs and video games and it's so cool. It's really great. Um, and I thought that was going to be it for the day and then my interpreter said, hey, there's another dorm. Do you want to go to it? And I hadn't heard of this one. I said, oh, another dorm that's being shut down. He says, no, it's not being shut down, but it's, I think you'll like it. Um, and again, dorms are incredibly rare in Japan, so for me to get to go to both of these is amazing. And he said, we very likely won't be able to go into the other dorm, but at least you can go see it. They have some tatekan too. So I, I went there expecting not to be able to go inside. I saw the tatekan, which were right on the street, and so were the ones at Yoshida, um, which I, I thought they could get in so much trouble for. So I, I really wonder if like, those were even allowed um, because they were they were very political um, in such a cool way, so awesome. So both of these dorms had their tatekan like right on the street of streets of Kyoto. Um, so we went inside and went to the front desk and we asked uh, if we were allowed to look inside if there's anyone who can talk to us. And it was no problem. They just looked at me. They're like, yeah, who do you want to talk to? What are you studying? And I said, well, I'm looking at um, student movements and activities in Japan. They were like, all right. And they got on this intercom and they were like, um, can this person and this person please come to the front desk to give a tour? <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. And the students hadn't eaten lunch yet because it was lunchtime. And this is another super rare thing for Japan. I have gotten to experience some like amazing stuff today and rode a bike. Ugh. <laughs> so, so the students were like, hey, let's have lunch together and just talk. And both the students spoke English. Yes. Uh, which was really great. So, um, so we went and had lunch in their cafeteria, but their cafeteria is not like any other school cafeteria. Just like with um, people who work in the library now, library staff, the universities, most of the work is outsourced to these other companies. And so most cafeterias now are the exact same way. They're staffed with people who work for another company who are then paid by the university to come and work as a specific type of person doing a specific type of thing. This cafeteria was not that. It was run by four people who, like, owned it, basically. They they worked there. That was their job. They ran it. They did they did everything, which is so rare. They were, uh, they were autonomous. They had all this freedom. And when I asked if that was normal, they said, no, absolutely not. Um, I guess a long time ago, it used to be that way. But a long, long time ago. But it was so rare. They're, they're like, self 
contained. They can do whatever they like. Um, so I was talking to the students about their thoughts about things and how they felt and why they chose to go to school and why they chose to live in the dorms. And the conversations were so good. It was such a stark contrast between some other conversations I've had. Oh, I just got like goosebumps because like the conversation was so good and so honest. Yeah, so they were talking about their majors and and everything and then they're like, yeah, let's go on a tour. Like after we had lunch, I can't talk too much about um, exactly what they told me because I want to make sure that their identities and privacy are protected. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it, but so there were two of them and then they took me on a tour. Uh, the tour was so cool. Again, god, this dorm is awesome. Like, so much art. The entire stairway was, like, floor to ceiling, like, beautiful, beautiful murals that people had done on the wall. And I said, can anyone do this? I said, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can put up anything you want to here. It was so beautiful. It was like a collective. They had their own spaces, their own everything. Nobody controlled it. It was them. It was the students and only the students. People don't come in and clean. People don't do anything. And it was like messy. Yeah, there were cobwebs everywhere, but it was gorgeous. It was so raw. It's the only way I can explain it. So then we went down into the basement and they were showing uh, me all the doors and all the rooms. And we come to this like thick, like super thick, bank vault looking door and they were like oh this is our club room and i was like is this a boiler room did they put you in the boiler room i don't understand so they open it this is like this is our activist space it's a huge door and they told me the story about how police tried to get through the door once you could see like the weld marks on it and then they were like yeah it takes about four hours to weld through this just in case we need time i was like what <laughs> You're the real deal! Um, and at this point, uh, I didn't know the name of their group, I just knew that they were students living in the storm who were activists. Um, so they showed me their room. They allowed me to take pictures actually, but I can't I can't share them with anybody, they're just for me. Um, I, so I promised them that I wouldn't, and I won't, absolutely. But because like, for them to trust me, oh, that's so cool. So they took me into their space and they showed me their art. Uh, there was a whole studio for the entire dorm, not just for them, where people... It's a an art studio, like a huge, much bigger than this hotel room where people make the tatekans. And there were some in progress. Oh man, they were beautiful. So amazing. Um, and their room was amazing, like so much good literature and like art that they've done and protest signs and like protest helmets and man so many cool things and they showed me a bunch of stuff took me on all over the building showed me all over a whole bunch of tours and then in the end i was like oh what do you call your group does your group have a name uh and they just look at me they're like oh we're we're zengakuren and like I can't even explain how I feel right now. Zengakuren is so, so well known. Such a well known activist group with such a long history dating all the way back to like the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Japan. And these students were it. They are the modern Zengakuren. I never thought in a million years that I would ever get to meet Zengakuren, and I did, and I didn't know it when they were showing me around and like when they were answering my questions and talking about what they cared about. They're Zengakuren! It was so cool! Oh my goodness! So I got to meet them, and I got to see their space, and they trusted me to talk to me. Oh, I'm so excited. I am so, so excited. So today was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Even though I didn't get to go to Nishiki Street or Gion, that's fine. I got to meet the real deal. Something I never thought I would get to do when I came here. I got to do it. Oh my god, that is worth so much. So much, so much, so much for me to meet Zengakuren. Like, 
I I don't even have words. So cool. Yeah. So that was my day. And then after all that, I rode my bike back and I am still like processing just how, I mean, it's immense to me. I feel like maybe other people won't care as much, but this is like the coolest, the coolest thing. I met with seals and I met with Zengakuren. Like, if I could only do two things while I was here in terms of my project, it would have been those two over above everything. Meet Seals and meet Zengakuren and talk to them and understand how they feel and why they're doing what they do and what they think the environment is like. And I got to do that. Man. And they had a lot of good stuff to say, both Seals and Zengakuren. Like, great, 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 great stuff to say. Yeah. Anyway, what a good day. Such a good day. So for the rest of my day, the reason I'm trying to make a really quick video is because uh, I am... I have to make a reservation for uh, the Shikansen back to Tokyo tomorrow. Wait, it's sad to be leaving Kyoto. Oh, goodbye Kyoto. I'll come back. Um, so I have to make a reservation and also... Of course I'm figuring all this out just as I'm getting ready to leave. So, remember how I was so stressed about carrying around that freaking luggage? Well, I knew this this existed. Um, there's this luggage forwarding service, but I'm always so nervous to try new things and to figure it out that I just like do it the hard way. Like walking everywhere when I could have biked, or forwarding my luggage, or carrying my luggage when I could have just forwarded it. Apparently. Pretty much all hotels have this luggage forwarding service. You just go right down to the front desk, fill out the little form, and they send your luggage to your next hotel or destination for you. Yeah. Yep. So, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go downstairs, fill out a form, drop off my luggage tomorrow, and then I don't have to worry about that crap. It'll just be at the hotel when I get there tomorrow. Uh, you can also do this for the airport, it turns out. Uh, at my next hotel, I could just be like, send this to the airport, please, and they'll just send it away. I never have to carry that freaking luggage again. So because of that, I bought a ton of uh, very Kyoto-specific souvenirs um, to bring back to you all today, but I can't show you them because when you're in Japan, you can actually buy stuff uh, tax-free, duty-free. So, I mean, because you don't live here so you don't um, have to pay taxes uh, and then you like pay a little bit when you go back anyway but um, yeah so you can get stuff duty free here which I highly recommend it makes things way cheaper especially because the tax in Japan just went up to 10% um, and there's been a lot of protests about that too like people are mad uh, people who normally wouldn't talk about politics or anything like that. Like, people are talking about the tax increase, uh, which is really problematic, and it's being done for a lot of different reasons. Um, yeah, that's a whole other thing. Highly recommend looking up stuff on it uh, outside of just the news, because the news is very, like, surface, surface level. Uh, especially certain news outlets in Japan, like, the, it's not, not incorrect news or anything like that. It just, you know, sometimes omits things, not maliciously, but yeah, anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, yeah, so go to the duty-free counter, it's great way cheaper, and I'm bringing back tons of souvenirs for everyone. I got a bunch of stuff today. Very, like, special Kyoto uh, things, some matcha, some other stuff. Oh yeah, and the reason I can't show you them, but I can show you the bag. I just got it. Hold on. Let me, let me do that. Okay. Okay. 
So the reason I can't show you it is because when you buy things duty free, they put it in this bag and then it has this big old warning like, don't open it. <laughs> don't open it. Um, so it's in this bag, which sucks a little bit. Now I need to figure out how to like pack this. Otherwise I would just like Tetris it in my bag, but mm, whatever. I don't have to carry it. So, uh, and then I got, I don't even know what this is. What did I get? Oh, this is a present from my dad. This isn't, this isn't for you all. That's for my dad. Yeah. So anyway, so bring it back. Um, some really special presents. Yeah. Excited. Things you can only get in Tokyo. Okay. Uh, 30 minutes. Yeah, I pretty much nailed that. I called it. Okay. So I'm gonna go um, finish up getting souvenirs for the night, get my ticket, um, forward my freaking bag, a couple other things, and I'll talk to y'all later. I hope you're having a good night. Hope everything's going well. Hope your week started well, and I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye, 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 bye.